Hola todos, this is going to be my final video before A-Level Spanish Paper 2. It's going to be a combination of various resources, some of which are specific to La Casa de Bernarda Alba and Volver, and other stuff that's just generic advice for this paper. So, I'm going to start off by looking through the mark scheme. It's always really important to know where your marks are coming from in the exam. So AO3 and AO4 is 20 marks each, so 40 in total for AQA. It's similar for LXL, but LXL is also 50, not um, 40 marks. So students are advised to write approximately 300 words per essay. However, there's no word limit, so you can write way more than 300. But if you write close to 300 or more than 300, um, you will have uh, access to the full range of marks. So top band for AO3, language produced is mainly accurate with occasional minor errors. So minor errors is like um, adjective agreement, sometimes slip ups, but stuff like errors with tenses, that's considered more uh, major errors. The student shows a consistently secure grasp of grammar and is able to manipulate complex language accurately. So using reflexive verbs, using those more complex like impersonal phrases, not just um, the simple basic like present tense and so on. And the student uses a wide range of vocabulary appropriate to the context and the task. So again, using words that relate to the text or film. And I'll talk more about that later on. And then AO4 is your evaluation to the question. Um, so knowledge of the text or film is consistently accurate and detailed. So making sure you know basic things like character names, etc. And then like the more specific um, plot points as well. Opinions, views and conclusions are consistently supported by relevant and appropriate evidence from the text or film. So using quotes and stuff. It does not have to be direct quotes, it can just be reference to a certain scene, a certain plot point. And the essay demonstrates ex excellent evaluation of the issues, themes and cultural and um, social context of the text or film. So including context stuff like you would at GCSE for English literature and evaluating the overall themes, the um, author's like point of view, the author's intention, that, that sort of thing. Vale, I've put all the advice from the end of the Modern Language Study Guide all together here. Let's have a quick read through it. So for planning and then actually writing an essay. So roughly you should spend around 10 minutes planning your essay, 50 minutes writing and 5 minutes proofreading at the end. A well-planned essay makes points clearly so that the examiner can follow your argument. So basically it helps with the structure of it, making sure it's all logically follows in different steps. Um, so yeah, read the question carefully and make sure you've understood what you're being asked to do rather than focusing on the general topic. It is sensible to plan your essay in Spanish in the target in the target language. Um, this will prevent you from writing ideas that you are not able to express in Spanish. Look out for key words such as de que manera, por qué, como, analiza, all those um, question words. Are you being asked to analyze, evaluate? Those two are the, the most common ones. Um, select the main point you want to make in your essay and break this down into subsections. Avoid writing an all-inclusive account, which occasionally touches on the essay title. Decide on the order of your main ideas, um, which then will become separate paragraphs. Note down linking words or phrases you can use between paragraphs to make your essay flow as a coherent and logical argument. Um, select some concise quotations. No need for overly long quotations, just small ones that make your point clear, which you can use to illustrate the points you make. And then general structure of the essay, all of you would know this already. Introduction um, is going to be your main your main point, your overall point without rewriting the essay title. Um, the body of the essay, multiple paragraphs, which each is like a different point, and then a conclusion summarizing your essay. Okay. Actually writing, it's important to be rigorous in sticking to your plan and not to get sidetracked into developing an argument or making a point that is not relevant to the specific essay question. So really important to be relevant to what you're um, writing about. Do not be tempted to write all that you know about the work. A scattergun approach is unproductive and gives the impression that you do not know or you do not understand the title and you are hoping that some of your answer sticks. This is a really good point here. Um, I tend to always just write so much that I'm writing all the different stuff I'm knowing it's not actually fully relevant to the essay title. It is important to think on your feet when writing an examination essay. If you produce a pre-learned essay in, in an examination in the hope that this will fit the title, you will learn you will earn a little credit since such essays tend not to match what is required by the title. So again being relevant. When writing your essay, a degree of formality is necessary in your style. Be attentive to the register you use. Avoid colloquial language like slang and stuff and avoid abbreviations. And lastly, when quoting, be careful not to make the quotation a substitute for your argument. Quotations should illustrate, illustrate your point aptly and not be too long. Resist the temptation to include quotations that you have learned if they are not relevant to the question. All fair points there.
Okay, even more advice for me, this time from the AQA exam and report from June 2022. So, students should ensure that they learn the key vocabulary that is needed whenever they write or talk about a certain book or film. And for La Casa and Volver, we're going to talk about this towards the end of this video. Um, when revising, they should jot down a list of themes and characters and then take each one and write notes on everything they could remember about their theme or character. Then they should return to, the, to their class notes and check their work. This is a good point like blurting, write down everything you can remember and then double check so of what you missed out on at the end. It's important to get the names of characters, authors and directors right. To begin with, it gives a bad impression to get these wrong and at worst, the whole essay can be off point if students mistake one character for another. This is especially important for La Casa with, with the five different daughters. They do have similar names, um, so make sure you know that each one is a different character. Uh, detailed knowledge of the book or film is essential. The aim should be to know the book to know the book or film so well that students can adapt their knowledge to whatever comes up. Students should spend time unlocking the question, the whole question, what exactly does it ask? Is there more than one element that needs covering? What kind of evaluation or analysis does it require? This is a good point so in your planning stage. Um, annotate the question itself, break down the question. There's normally Especially if it's a longer question, like they have been doing in recent years, if it's like a whole like three line statement, um, analyze all different parts of it. Um, do they mention different themes, characters? Normally the question, um, again, in recent years have been quite long, tend to have a lot of words. So analyze the entire question. Don't miss out a part of it. Students should be careful not to twist the question so that they can reproduce an essay they have done in term time. Instead, they should adapt what they know to the question set. Um, it's literally whatever you write, if it's not relevant to the question, it won't get many marks. There's no point writing stuff that's not relevant. Students should avoid spending ages retelling the story when providing evidence for a point they are making. They should explain the episode briefly, just enough for their reference to be clear and relevant. Again, writing more words does not automatically mean you'll get a higher mark. Sometimes it's better to be concise and like simple, make simple points that are logical instead of just going on and on and going on and on. They must also be absolutely sure um, of their understanding of the historical or geographical setting of the book or film is accurate. Examples of misunderstandings are the erroneous link of Bernarda Alba to Franco, involved comments on Franco's impact on the life of Ramunda, or um, all the neighbours in the village helping to move Paco's body, the film El Labirinto del Fauno taking place during the Civil War. Okay, I apologize, this video is a bit of a compilation of various things, but I've gone through lots of advice, so now I'm going to go through some good sentence starters and essay writing phrases. I'm shocked I haven't actually made a video on this before, um, but anyway, I've got a lot of different lists in front of me in paper form, so let's organize some of these. I'm going to pick um, the phrases that I prefer, but your teacher has probably given you more extensive lists, so feel free to sort of refer to those as well. So um, let's start off chronologically with ways to introduce a point or introduce a paragraph. Um, primero, Segundo and tercero, really simple ways, firstly, secondly, thirdly, or for example, en primer lugar, um, en, en segundo lugar, is it? en segundo lugar, en tercero, tercero lugar as well, so in first place, second place, third place. Um, some more complex ones I like to use is empecemos, empecemos um, ahora a considerar and your second paragraph can start with pasemos, pasemos um, ahora, oops, pasemos ahora a considerar. Oh, this should be, sorry, uh, empecemos por considerar. So we start off by saying, and then now we will continue on by considering or saying. Um, then we have, I normally actually use como um, punto de partida. So basically from like a starting point of view, um, to start off with actually, let's say to start off with. Um, okay, and then we have, okay, ways to give evidence, evidence, we can have, por ejemplo, is the simplest one, and then stuff like, pongamos, por ejemplo, um, ejemplo, la escena del acto, I think that's a good one, so, um, putting as evidence the scene from this act, mm -hmm. la escena en la que something happens, Another way of introducing um, a quotation or referring to a scene. Um, other ones, algunas escenas, algunas escenas tales como, such as las últimas, for example. Um, so some scenes, such as the final few scenes, blah, 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 do this or show this, etc. 
opinion phrases, quickly say some, quickly go through some of them. So, a mi modo de ver, um, diría que, I always use that one, diría que, um, a mi parecer, etc, etc. Always, you want to show, you're not just stating facts, you're giving your opinion, your interpretation to the, you know, the text or film. Other ones like, no cabe, duda de que is a good one, there is no doubt to that, there is no doubt that. Synonyms to sin embargo, which is however, um, we can say no obstante, I think that's quite a good one, no obstante, oops, obstante. Um, other ones it says here, en cambio, so instead, um, and I just say pero, for example, as well, por otro lado. Oh yeah, por el contrario, on the contrary, um, again, basically like the on the opposite side of something. Um, okay, these are going to be more specific to actual like text and films. So for example, es un telón de fondo perfecto. So it is the perfect, it is the perfect backdrop to something. Um, other ones, es una escena emocionante, for example, exciting, emo, how do you spell this, emocionante, exciting, sin, lo cierto es que, the truth is that, truth is that, Aha, el lector, or also la lector, is the reader, and then um, for films we have la audencia, La audencia, which is the audience. This is a good one for subjunctive. Sea lo que sea. Hay que decir que. So, um, whatever it is, you have to say that. Hay que decir. A lo largo de, for example, el argumento, the plot argumento, or... Um, El drama, also the plot, I think. Um, so throughout, a lo largo there means throughout. And then in your introduction, um, I always use at the end of every introduction, I say something like, "Oops, voy a analizar, um, como or something like analizaré, analizaré, como." more etc so whatever the question is um, my final sentence in the introduction is like i will analyze the, th the theme of um, fear for example whatever it is and then finally let's talk about some some um, conclusion phrases i always use al fin y al cabo is a really good one al fin y al cabo is like an idiom as well um other ones la you can say la conclusión a que nos lleva este análisis es que Slightly longer ones at the conclusion that this analysis, like in your essay, brings us to is analysis. And lastly, en resumen, another way of saying in summary or in conclusion. Okay, before I continue, I've got loads of paper two videos on my channel covering the four most popular texts and films. Um, La Casa, Volver, El Laberinto del Fauno, and Como Agua para Chocolate. These videos are all in playlists, which you can find on the homepage or linked in the description. And I've got a page on my website for each text. For example, um, espanish.com slash lcdba for La Casa de Bernardo Alba. Okay, so now to jump into um, specific terminology for La Casa and Volver. So I've got a um, writing mic for each one of these, again, on my website. And specifically to draw your attention to this section here, so it says La Casa de Bernarda Alba, specific terminology. Stuff like La um, Obra Lorquiana, um, etc, etc, all these different words that are specific to the to the text. Stuff like La, t la Tirania, La Rebellion, El Suicidio, La Opresora. And then for Volver, um, La Comida Típica Manchega, La Rebeca, which is the cardigan that um, Raimunda wears. All these are the nouns and verbs that um, are specific to the content of Volver. And you can download both of these from my website, astarspanish.com. I've also got this mind map here, which has analysis of various scenes and some good context stuff. Um, I made this a few months ago. I haven't made a specific video for it, but this PDF is on my site. It's all free, by the way. And that brings us to the end of this video. I've got some essay titles here that I'm predicting might come up in the 2024 question. Best of luck for the exam, and thanks so much for watching my A-level videos for however long you have been. I personally have really enjoyed this A-level. Um, I'm not sure if you guys feel the same. 
I'm also going to mention here that if you may be going to study languages at uni or even if you're not and you want to be a part of my team next year making videos and other resources even tutoring for younger years then please go in contact with me via email that's it for this video gracias y buena suerte